It's a great pleasure for me to welcome the director of The Great Book Robbery, a 56-, 57-minute uh, documentary which has been shown on Al Jazeera English. It is also uh, screening through the U.S. through the month of February. Uh, and you can find more information at thegreatbookrobbery.org. Benny Bruner, director of uh, The Great Book Robbery. Uh, welcome to the program, Benny. Hi, Sam. Glad to be here. Uh, now, uh, full disclosure, uh, Benny and I are friends from the, uh, the film circuit. I had the opportunity to go see Benny's film the other night uh, at uh, Columbia University, and it's a fantastic film. And, Benny, just briefly, um, just give us a, a, what it is that you set out, what story you set out to tell when you, uh, when you started to, uh, to, uh, to make this film. The Great Blue Clover is basically the story of at least 70,000 looted Palestinian books. Uh, the books were looted or systematically looted by the Israeli librarians of the Israeli National uh, Library together with the army during the 1948 war. And uh, this took place in, in primarily the major cities um, uh, in uh, Israel, Palestine at that time. Um, yes. Jerusalem, yes. Uh, Haifa, Jaffa. Um, Nazareth. And, and so uh, just, uh, just walk us through a little bit about um, how this takes place, because to say that um, the library was looting, I mean, it's just, I think it's hard for people to, to sort of just grasp um, uh, how, what were the mechanisms of this? Okay. Well, one has to remember. Let let me let me uh, lay out the the context of uh, of, of this uh, historical event. Um, there was a lot of looting t- taking place in 1948, especially in the urban centers, uh, the ones you mentioned: Jerusalem, Jaffa, Haifa. Um, so what happened was that, uh, especially in Jerusalem, it started there. Uh, the, the, the soldiers and the authorities noticed that uh, individuals, you know, uh, Jew, Jews, uh, residents of uh, Jerusalem, would go into abandoned uh, Palestinian homes, mainly of uh, middle class and upper middle class Palestinians, and will, uh, you know, they would loot the contents of the of, of these houses, uh, carpets, uh, furniture, pianos, you name it. Um, and uh, the, 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 some of the soldiers mentioned to the army first and later on to the librarians of the National Library that they, they saw many, many books in some of these homes. So uh, that triggered the, the management of the National Library to uh, put in motion an, um, what they called at the time a salvage operation, to rescue these uh, important books, many of them very important, and to uh, bring them to the uh, library for safekeeping until they can uh, return them to their rightful owners. Uh, so something that started with a good intention very quickly in, in a matter of weeks or some months uh, has been transformed basically into a organized looting because they uh, very quickly, the librarians especially, uh, decided that the books are better served if they will be kept in the National Library. And the, the fascinating thing about your film is that it, in many respects, and perhaps, you know, um, and I guess it, it depends on which context we're talking about when we talk about conventional wisdom, but certainly the mainstream narrative of the, um, the, the founding of the state of Israel is that um, when Israel was founded, it was essentially a land without people. And one of the things I think that your film does remarkably well, in a way that I, you know, uh, and uh, granted I, I have limited exposure to just seeing films these days, uh, but... Uh, does remarkably well is it paints a picture of a of a thriving um, intellectual and artistic culture that existed prior 
to uh, the uh, that existed amongst the Palestinian people living there. T- just give us a sense of of what it was like in these cities for the Palestinian middle class. Okay. First of all, let's uh, let let me refer to the to the founding myth that you uh, mentioned in your question. You know, the the, the Zionist slogan was uh, concerning Palestine, uh, a land without a people for a people without a land. The Jews being the people without a land. Well, uh, not only that there was a people in Palestine. There were about uh, in '48 there were about a million Palestinians. Uh, even a little bit more, and uh, they managed to establish uh, between 1917, when the Brits took over the place from the, the Ottoman Turks, they managed to establish uh, a, a vital, uh, thriving cultural scene uh, in in the big centers of uh, of Palestine: Jerusalem, Jaffa, Haifa, Nazareth. Uh, you know, newspapers. Uh, Jaffa was a major uh, um, uh, center for printing at least uh, four or five national newspapers in Arabic, and uh, the, the the center for uh, publishers, book publishers. Uh, Jerusalem had uh, uh, very advanced uh, schools. Uh, advancing even in, 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 in today's terms, uh, you, 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 you had uh, the theater groups traveling from Egypt to uh, Lebanon and in the way making the stop in Haifa to perform. There was, you know, you had theater, you had cinema, the, the, the full Monty, so to speak. So it was... Uh, it was a, a lively, thriving, uh, vibrant uh, cultural scene, and that has been lost in 1948. And uh, the, the 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 whole thing of my film is that it talks about it. It deals with this aspect of the Palestinian catastrophe or the Nakba, as they call it, uh, from this aspect. It's, it was never talked really. Uh, hardly mentioned, and uh, due to the fact that a PhD student, Israeli PhD student, who about five years ago found uh, these documents that attest to this uh, event, that, uh, you know, that saved it from going into oblivion. And talk, I mean, talk about this. Uh, one of the, the, the fascinating things that um, uh, you, that is related in your film is this sort of cultural connection between um, uh, Beirut and Cairo and Damascus that would run through, um, I guess it was, was a Jaffa or a Haifa. Um, Haifa, Haifa, Haifa. Yeah. And um, via a railway line, I mean, it, and it has, you know, it has the same feel of, uh, you know, having grown up in the northeast of, uh, of, of this country. Uh, you had these major urban centers uh, that were just a couple hours away from each other via train, and this created just a, a a thriving sort of mixture of of ideas and and art and uh, and, and whatnot. Yes. Yes, absolutely. You know, you 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 have to look at it as uh, as one space. All those uh, Palestine had its own uh, mandatory British mandatory borders. But culturally speaking, it was one space. Uh, there was uh, almost free movement of people, goods, uh, culture between uh, Cairo, Haifa, Jaffa, Jerusalem, Beirut, Damascus. It was a free flow. It was, uh, you know, it's, you can look at it as uh, uh, United States today where, you know, uh, uh, theater groups and books and uh, films are moving freely between uh, the east and the west coast. And so let's talk the about. Same goes to, uh, to Palestine. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Hello, Benny. So the same goes. The same goes for the for the for the scene in in Palestine of the time between indeed between 1917 and 1948 under the British rule. Uh, it was an. Uh, it was open borders, basically. You needed some uh, documentations, but very basic. So people just moved around, uh, and uh, 
and did their business, whatever it was, commerce or uh, culture. And so, I mean, uh, so you've 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 described uh, in your film, you've described the sort of this context that is contrary to the the conventional wisdom. Give me a sense of why you think the this. I mean, as uh, as an American Jew. Uh, as an American citizen, at the very least, and uh, you are um, uh, you're living in Denmark. Uh, but you were born uh, in Israel. In the Netherlands. In the Netherlands. In Netherlands. Not uh, yet. I don't live in Denmark yet. Oh. I live in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam. Apologies, and um, <laughs> but uh, okay. that could be in your future. One never knows. But. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, but I mean, the the conventional wisdom here, the narrative is, or at the very least, there's been an absence of discussion of the presence of any type of vital uh, Palestinian community or one that was uh, one which we could relate to from our our narrow perspective, uh, you know, in the European or American society. What what do you think accounts for that? I mean, is it a is it a function of a narrative that has political expediency and value uh, to a, a Zionist perspective? Is it um, part of the fact that because the the center of or the centers of Palestinian culture were sort of were dispersed in such a dramatic and um, sudden fashion that there was no way to tell this story? I mean, what what accounts for this? I think basically it's a mixture of uh, all the different uh, points you mentioned. Uh, I think there is a strong Orientalist uh, look of the West towards the East. In other words, we we don't see the East as it is. We see uh, we relate to an imaginary East that uh, we created in our own imagination. there is a colonial aspect to it as well, that, you know, we look down on them, the, the natives, uh, and we are the possessors of the a higher culture, a, a better one, a more advanced one. Then there is the this lingering uh, Western uh, uh, guilt uh, towards the Jews, as to do of the hol- with the Holocaust, of course, um, you know, it's it's a mixture of all that, and of course, the, 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 let's not forget the the major role of uh, the Jewish lobby in this country, which is powerful and uh, uh, can dictate uh, quite a lot of the of the way the the political establishment, but not only, also the the media relate to uh, to Israel, to Palestine, to the Arabs, to Islam. Uh, I think the sooner we we recognize and acknowledge that uh, you know, the Palestinian had a, con- a culture, a thriving one, uh, the 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 Muslims are not all terrorists, and so on. The better will be for everybody involved. It's so it's it's a uh, it's a journey. We we have to uh, to work on it, to keep knocking on the door. And keep mentioning it that you know history has been different. Uh, uh, there were people who lived there. There were uh, a culture. There, there was uh, there were libraries, uh, and all this uh, you know all the topics that we discussed in this talk and uh, I raised in my film. How how um, how pervasive is the awareness of the existence of Palestinian culture uh, prior to 1948? How, uh, how, how, how much awareness is that amongst Israelis? I would say close to, uh, close to none, almost zero, nada. Uh, there, was, uh, there was a big article published in one of the Israeli dailies, Aharetz, uh, uh, some sometime in uh, mid uh, December 2012, just before I went to Israel Palestine to tour with my film, and it was interesting to note some of the talkbacks. You know, I, I don't know how you call it here when so when people uh, readers react to an article and write something. The comments. Uh, comments, yeah. In Israel, the 
call it talkbacks. Okay. Anyway, um, some of them were really revealing. Uh, uh, people just ask, what, what culture are you talking about? Palestinian culture? Did, did they have writers? Did they have a language? Uh, what, what they could do be, uh, beside uh, mixing hummus and uh, eating it? How can you talk about Palestinian culture? And I think it's very revealing, basically, although it probably came from some right-wingers uh, in Israel. I think it's, uh, it really, it's, it's a revealing um, notion. And of course, also the, 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 the response that I got from, uh, from a leading uh, uh, 1948 Israeli historian, Benny Morris, when uh, I told him what I'm busy with, um, that goes back a couple of years now, uh, he told me, you know, this, this historical event, I heard of, of it, he told me about the, the, the collection of the books, the, the looting of the books. But I want to tell you, it's, I, would, I don't consider it even as an, uh, uh, a footnote in the, in the history of 1948. And when I... Uh, told him, listen, you cannot say on, on the destruction of uh, urban centers and uh, the, 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 the destruction of a culture as a, as a footnote, he said, well, I don't think so. It's, it's, it is not more than a footnote. So it, when it comes from somebody in his position and with his knowledge, it's uh, very telling. And, and people should know that Benny Morris um, is a is a historian who wrote uh, the book The Birth of the Palestinian Refugee Problem. Uh, exactly. In 1947. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's very important. He, uh, used to be very important. Still is important in the in the history of the of 1948 and the ongoing Israeli Arab or Israeli Palestinian conflict. He, he was the first. Indeed, the book uh, that you mentioned that was published in the mid 1980s was the first one actually to uh, put to rest this myth uh, that uh, we Israelis uh, didn't expel any Palestinians. Because uh, he, uh, he was in the right place at the right time when a lot of uh, military and state documents became available. And he, it just showed uh, how systematically the expulsion was and how, uh, how it was done. How, and you, and you uh, ended up making a film uh, entitled Al uh, Al Nakba, the the Palestinian yes, catastrophe. Yes. But I mean, how boys. do you, uh, yes. how do you how do you I mean how do you reconcile his perspective on on it being such a small footnote? I mean what I mean what what does that mean? I mean for someone who had written a uh, a history which. Had broke the prevailing narrative that um, yes. that the Palestinians just got up and walked away. How how do you reconcile the idea that in his mind the fact that they were not just expelled but but had a vibrant cultural life there is not relevant to the conversation? It's not relevant to what happened in forty eight. That's what he says. Well, Benny Morris, uh, one has to uh, to 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 realize. He was never in the le on the left side. Uh, when he wrote his book uh, in, in the mid-80s, um, he, he did what he did, but he was never a lefty or what you call a liberal. And in time, and as events took place, and wars, and uh, uh, suicide bombers, and so on, that, you know, the whole... The whole uh, bloody history of, of, of that place. What he did, uh, he, he moved more and more to the center, and then he moved to, to the right. He's, uh, and he lost the little empathy and sympathy that he had to the Palestinian tragedy. And uh, so he, he became sort of indifferent, indifferent. So and uh, that's, that's horrible, that's, uh, the, the fact that he... But let me ask you, I mean, I'm, I'm less interested in, in, in Benny Morris, the person, than I am the, the impetus to deny the relevance of that, when, uh, to deny the relevance of a, vi of a vibrant, because, you know, from a historical perspective, um, if, there's, if it's relevant from a historical perspective, um, uh, you know, as to 
uh, the the expulsion of uh, of Palestinians, it surely must be relevant as to what they were doing there. <laughs> Yes, that that's what I'm mentioning. I mean, I'm not discussing Benny Morris the person or Benny Morris the historian. I'm discussing Benny Morris the phenomena that uh, you know uh, uh, points to to a larger uh, attitude of of so many Israelis, the majority of them, unfortunately. Uh, and that's uh, it's. I think most Israelis lost. Uh, or maybe many of them never never possessed the ability to sympathize with the with the other side to realize that our our uh, triumph our ability to uh, establish a state after so many years in in exile and living as uh, you know as a people without a state uh Came came on the on the on uh, on the foothills of of uh, another people tragedy. That's the, the the inability to realize the the the, the biblical injustice, if you like, that was uh, that we we created in 1948. Uh, that's 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 the main problem, and it's 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 quite painful when it comes from uh, somebody like Benny Morris, who knows so much about you know he knows so much. The information about the, the the events of 1948 and what even came before that and after that, but seems to understand so little about about uh, what what it means, what it stands for, what what uh, what we did to uh, to another people. Has he seen the film? I mean, I don't mean to focus on uh, on, on Benny Morris, on but Benny he... Morris. I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, I'm... But occasionally we meet because, uh, you know, when he travels uh, to Europe for his businesses or when I'm in Israel, we, we sometimes meet. So next time I'll, uh, I'll give him a, the DVD and I'll, I wonder what he will say. Yes, I mean, I'm curious because um, obviously when you, you make a, a film like this, you're, you're obviously you're creating a record, but you want to have uh, an impact on on the the current state of 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 i guess of perception of of, of on the discussion on, on the, the discussion on the, and on, on, what, yes absolutely what yes. what do you hope um what, what do you hope uh, when a viewer who has either been unaware of the uh, of of the Palestinian cultural life that was uh, dispossessed, or one who feels like it's irrelevant. What do you hope that they walk away, um, and and what impact do you do you hope that the film will have? Well, I hope that first of all people will get uh, aware of uh, the existence of uh, a Palestinian culture and a people, and the fact that uh, this. Uh, Monumental injustice uh, happened to them, was done to them, and that people will open their hearts. I mean, the sort of people you 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 mentioned will open their heart and uh, let in some uh, some or develop some sympathy and empathy with the with the Palestinians. Um, and uh, if if they want to take uh, a stand, maybe they can write to their congressman or congresswoman and, uh, you know, say, uh, vote with your conscience next time that you vote on a Middle Eastern policy uh, something. Y y this, is your, uh, this is your fifth film, I think. Is that right? That's been released at this point? Oh, this, this, is, this is my 15th. Oh, fifteenth. I'm sorry. You know, I uh, you your about section is a little bit uh, is a little bit thin, uh, Benny, <laughs> on uh, on the great on the the great book uh, robbery. But um, do you, uh, overall, I mean, thematically, what is it that uh, that you're trying to do with your documentaries? I'm trying to tell a different uh, narrative, and, uh, a narrative that uh, is little known, especially in this country, a narrative that uh, uh, I think is closer to what really happened. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to... Uh, it's, uh, you can look at it as a counter-narrative. Uh, I think uh, decency uh, calls to uh, to tell what 
what we really did, and um, also calls to, uh, to 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 say that it's time to uh, uh, get the record straight. I think it will. It, it's 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 essential for us Israelis to uh, to acknowledge uh, the, the 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 true meaning of 1948 in in order to be able to move forward. I think we are stuck by the denial and by the refuse to uh, to acknowledge the, the real event of 1948 and uh, our real impact on on the other side it's uh, it, it you know we are stuck and we will remain stuck as long as we don't acknowledge it so in this respect i see myself in, as an israeli patriot Though I'm sure most of his, uh, the Israelis, not only these on the right, will, will say that I'm a traitor. Well, uh, Benny Bruner, director of the Great Book Robbery, uh, book robbery. You can uh, check it out at thegreatbookrobbery.org. Uh, dates while uh, Benny is still in the United States and uh, information on. Uh, that film and how to purchase a DVD for yourself. Benny, thank you so much for joining us.